morning. Uh, it's not morning. It's not morning. Good afternoon, friends. Happy Friday. It's September 6th. Um, I'm getting back in the swing of academics, spending time in my office again. It's the third week of the semester. This semester I am teaching Forbidden Archaeology for the third time. Uh, so I will have some videos related to that content. Um, as you know, if you follow this stuff, it's all just kind of one big steaming heap anyway, so it all goes together. What I wanted to talk to you about today was my trip to the Grave Creek Mound in Moundsville, West Virginia. I was driving back from summer vacation going from Michigan to South Carolina. Uh, I routed myself through Moundsville on purpose to stop and see the Grave Creek Mound because I've never seen it before. It is one of the largest or the largest. I think it is the largest Adena Mound, early woodland time period uh, in the east. Uh, and the folks on the quote unquote alternative archaeology side like to make a lot of hay out of it. Okay, I am in Moundsville. Uh, West Virginia. Um, I'm at the Grave Creek Mound. That's it. I'm about to climb it. I just took a quick tour through the interpretive center, which is very nice. Grave Creek Mound has been the source of a lot of uh, speculation about giants and whatnot, and um, there's also the Grave Creek Stone, which is an artifact that had an inscription on it. Um, almost certainly fake. I'm going to go up here and get a view of this. This is the largest uh, earthen mound of this time period. It is largely intact. It's been excavated into many times over the last couple centuries, but uh, here it is preserved right in town. Where are we going? Well, this is pretty high. Uh, it's really a commanding view. When you're up here, it's kind of hard to imagine um, what it might have looked like. Uh, I'm not sure what else was around in terms of, you know, contemporary habitation and that sort of thing. I need to look into that, but um, I think around a lot of these ceremonial sites there probably was some tree clearing that went on and that sort of thing, so you would have had a pretty good view. You know, this is a fairly large walnut tree. We're not quite up over the top of this one, but halfway up into the canopy, higher than some of these other trees over here where I was filming from before. It's down there in that shade. There's the interpretive center. Those bluffs over there are a road cut, so that's the Ohio River. It's cutting through there. The peaks on the other side are Ohio. So what I want to do first is play for you a little bit of the L.A. Marzulli Fritz Zimmerman video um, where they visit Grave Creek. So I guess this is just like a little teaser trailer. It's a four minute video. On the Trail of the Nephilim, I think, is a movie, a full length movie that L.A. Marzulli made. Um, I think he, he sent me an email a while back and offered me, I think it was 50 bucks to go on, quote unquote, on the record about the mound builders and I declined. Uh, anyway, let's see, you can watch the beginning here. The that the Nephilim are on the earth in those days and also afterwards. If that's true, can we find there evidence? Is. That Looks like he's in Peru here. I'm L.A. Marzulli, join me as we go on the trail of the Nephilim. I always say Nephilim. He says Nephilim. I guess the potato potato thing. Uh, okay, lots of nice shots of mounds. We go, there's the uh, epic compilation of cutting edge Nephilim research. You got to kind of scroll forward here. After we finish our montage, we got two minutes of montage. Then I think I think we start the Grave Creek stuff. We're in Moundsville, West Virginia, at the Grave Creek Mound. All right, that's Fritz Zimmerman. And we're in the museum right now, ready to uh, exit and see the burial mound. We just inquired with the uh, resident archaeologist about the giant skeletons, the Grave Creek stone. We said that there was no record of it. Um, the stone is no longer uh, displayed at the museum. And inquiring about the giant skeletons, he said that there was no record of it, there was no photographic evidence of it, and he really had no knowledge of it ever existing. Just before going out, we find a lithograph on this wall showing the giant skeleton of the once museum that was cut into the mound displaying the giant skeleton. All right, so they asked the archaeologist about the, the Grave Creek Stone, which is a whole other uh, thing. And the giant skeletons, the archaeologist says, there are no giant skeletons. We have no evidence. There are no accounts of giant skeletons. Um, so they must be hiding something, right? So our friend Fritz Zimmerman being the 
sleuth that he is notices a picture on the wall that he says is a giant skeleton. This is the picture here that our friend Fritz Zimmerman was um, excited about because he said it showed a giant skeleton on display. I'll try to get this to focus. Uh, this is supposedly the museum that was built inside the mound. Uh, anyway, it doesn't look particularly giant to me. That guy standing there looks uh, about the same size. If he was standing up straight, his head would come to about the same place on the wall as the quote-unquote giant skeleton. Uh, and this um, teenage girl there looks, you know, coming up to the elbow or something. I imagine these guys must get tons of questions about giants. So it's nice because they address, they have a um, two panels here addressing both the mound builder stuff and uh, toward the very end the Smithsonian um, you know suppression of information stuff and all about giants. Um, I would guess they get people wandering in here all the time asking about giant skeletons and that sort of thing. The, uh, the fact is not one of the reports, the professional reports from here mentioned anything as far as I know um, about giants or even unusually tall people. So uh, Jason Calavito looked into the history of the claim for giant bones, giant skeleton in the Grave Creek Mound and what he came up with was that the accounts of or this idea, this claim that there was a giant and there appears nowhere in the original um, reports, original accounts of excavations. Uh, da, 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 da. Zimmerman got the claim from an October 1922 article in the Charleston Daily Mail. Um, Archaeologists investigating the mound some years ago dug out a skeleton said to be that of a female because of the formation of the bones. The skeleton was seven feet four inches tall and the jawbone would easily fit over the face of a man weighing 160 pounds. Um, Jason notes that most of that account in the newspaper article is taken verbatim from the original site report, but attributing the bone or saying describing the bones as those of a giant seven foot four is not in the original site report. So where did that come from? He tracks it down to an 1876 letter that a guy wrote um, 40 years after, so this stuff was being excavated in the early 1800s, relating his memory of being present during the excavation of the mound. Uh, I would say that the engraved stone was found inside of the stone arch that was found in the middle of the mound, that's the Grave Creek stone, uh, and that in that stone arch was found a skeleton that measured 7 feet 4 inches. When the bones were placed upon wires, I took the lower jawbone and put it over my chin. It did not touch my face, and I was at the time a man who weighed 180 pounds. So am I. What a coincidence. Um, so Jason points out that this 1876 letter was written 40 years after the fact based on his memory uh, that doesn't agree with the contemporary accounts from the 1839 excavation. Um, nobody else corroborated it. So it's one guy remembering something, uh, remembering the skeleton being seven foot, four inches tall. Um, a lawyer who questioned Catlett, the guy who wrote the letter a few years later, found that Catlett had confused some events and misreported others. Although he was not questioning Catlett about the skeleton, but rather the stone, his efforts demonstrated that Catlett's account was a reconstruction of the past rather than an accurate record of it. So. No reports of giants in the literature, only report of a giant coming from a guy 40 years later who says that he measured it and it was seven foot four inches, uh, and that's a guy who got a lot of other stuff wrong. So that is it for the claim of giants in um, Grave Creek Mound. Um, and if you go over here, they've even got cutouts <laughs> showing the average Adina woman was 5'2", the average Adina man was 5'5". Five five. Again, doesn't mean there weren't tall people around, um, but these are not giants. If he's a giant, I'm a giant uh, The original historical marker, 69 feet high, 295 feet in diameter. Well, original 1963 historical marker. So that gives you the size. There's the mound over there. Um, I just had a really nice chat with the, um, let's see, what was her title? A cultural program coordinator, Andrea Keller. She said they do indeed get a lot of questions about giants and that sort of thing, so it was, it was nice to be able to express my gratitude for the panels that they put up addressing giant skeletons and the Smithsonian controversy and uh, all that sort of stuff. Um, I wish every museum like this would have that. People don't 
don't like it, you know, they want the mystery and that sort of thing. Um, but uh, site is impressive just as it is without the baloney. I can imagine Marzulli and his band walking in here looking for their giant conspiracy um, and being sorely disappointed. And that breaks my heart. I'm all for making something out of nothing, but it's, in terms of uh, the past, why don't we try to get it right, folks? So sad, but I came home with uh, zero giant bones again, which brings the total number of giant bones that I have found to zero. Did they say anything else about it, or is that it? Who's this guy? Tingos. My Tingos gunk goggles will tackle stubborn organic stains and eliminate nasty stinking odors at the same time. It stains and odors like fish, garlic, whoa, even skunk. Tingos is environmentally friendly, safe for use on fabrics, okay. carpet, okay. upholstery, and it works great as a laundry pre-soak on the worst pet. Alright, well, I'm, I'm a believer.